Right there, guys. Uh, as we promised last time around, uh, when we were introducing uh, the AMI, the Asterix AMI, uh, last week's tutorial was very theoretical, lots of top tips from Matthias. Uh, this week, we're going to get a bit more hands-on uh, by actually demonstrating what we need to do. So, Matthias, what are we going to do? First of all, go to Ideascale. <laughs> And keep voting. Hascom.ideascale.com yeah. and keep voting because it's very interesting for us. Yes. Cool. Fair it enough. makes things easy <laughs> in communication. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so we directly dive into it. We explained uh, what the asterisk AM, uh, AMI is and how to use it mm -hmm. and um, in theory. And now we do uh, the, the technical the practice programming, configuration, yes. hands-on. Just dive into yeah, it. Yeah, take it away. <laughs> um, asterisk, uh, this is my asterisk server as always. And first we have to have a look which ports are now open. So you can use netstat for it, minus LPN. Then you can see some um, Unix domain sockets, but here is uh, all the IP stuff. And you can see that asterisk has opened this port, those few ports, so the, those are for SIP, for AJAX, and so on and so forth. But the asterisk AMI port is missing. So per default, the asterisk AMI is disabled. As we explained last yes. time around, because of security measures and so on. Yes. So the first thing we should do is enable it. We can do this in etc asterisk manager.conf. And here is the security note. Only enable it if you know what you're doing. <laughs> I just can say the same. Yep. <laughs> um, they um, advise you to use an SSL connection or a VPN tunnel if you want to use it okay. through the internet. Mm -hmm. So never enable the asterisk CLI, uh, the asterisk AMI directly on a public IP address without any protection. Okay. So that's a bad idea. Don't do this. Even if you can permit and deny some networks, we will see it later on, mm -hmm. that's not enough. Um, you can enable TLS if you want to. Okay. We don't do for now because for demonstration purposes it's easier if it's unencrypted <laughs> as always. Um, but think what you're doing. If you're doing this on your local network, it's not a big deal. Okay. Um, you can protect it with the username and the password, and maybe uh, you can permit only special IP addresses, like your CRM system server, I don't know what you want to okay. um, use to talk to mm -hmm. asterisk or your some kind of server. You can restrict the access. Okay. Um, but for now, we just ignore all the security reasons and <coughs> enable it. There are two different kinds of um, access. This is the classical. Um, you just enable it and then you can uh, have a, a socket, a TCP uh, socket, where you can connect to mm -hmm. and read the commands and, and write commands. Um, but they have also a web, um, uh, web socket, which you could open. Or it's not a web socket, but you can access it by HTTP okay. mm -hmm. um, or HTTPS. Um, but then you need also to enable uh, the asterisk web server, which is the next security issue. So for now, we just enable it and we try to understand the concepts. Right. Okay. And then maybe in another tutorial, we talk about how to secure it. Okay, fair enough. Um, we say enable here. This is the port where the service will listen on. And this is the bind address. If you just want to use it for testing purposes, maybe it's a good idea to bind it on localhost so that uh -huh. you only can access it from local. Uh -huh. um, maybe this makes no sense because if you want to remote control something, then for sure you want to, because it's remote, yeah. to be somewhere else to control it. But for testing purposes with Telnet, uh -huh. maybe it's a good idea to bind it on the local host and then, okay. yes, right and then only access it from local. Um, here you can see parameters to control the AMI over TLS. So you can secure it and you can have certificates and stuff. And you can have TLS for protection, which is a good idea. For now it's too much for our testing purposes. So we go ahead to 
to the users. Here is an example user. We create a new one, which is Matthias. Maybe you just name it like the machine you want to access. Um, maybe CRM system mm -hmm. or, or ERP or, ERP or whatever my fancy remote, I don't know. Dialer, um, whatever. Dialer, yes, mm -hmm. Dialer yeah. is a very good yeah. word. <laughs> I use just my name, then I can remember it and I don't make mistakes. <laughs> and I have a secret. It's very secure, as always. And now we can say deny. So this is an IP level security, so access list. Mm -hmm. You can say deny those, allow those IP addresses or networks. Okay. So it's a good idea to deny everything per default. Yeah, and, and only permit a certain... Yes, okay, so a kind of whitelisting. Yeah, okay. Um, to do so, so, just say deny this IP address with this net mask. You have to use the full um, notation of the net mask. You cannot say um, slash 24 for 24-bit uh, mm -hmm. net mask. So you have yeah. to do it like this. Okay. And then you can say, um, like you can see in the example, permit. And now I permit my local network, which is that one. And again, the net mask, which is like this. You could do it the other way around. You could define an ACL. Uh, ACLs are defined in acl.conf okay. and they can be used on different places, not only for manager, mm -hmm. uh, for the manager API or for the AMI, um, but also in other configuration files. So you can put them in one place where you could say, my ACL is named servers okay. and then mm -hmm. there are all my servers defined. That you don't have mm -hmm. to define it again and again and again for every user or for every um, config file you want to So as we expand and get a bit more advanced with all this uh, kind mm. of stuff, using the ACL could be a very good option. Yes. So for one use, it just makes no difference. And mm -hmm. if you don't use ACL somewhere else, then, then it network. just makes no sense. But mm -hmm. it's a good idea. It's easy. Just go in the acl.conf and you see it's the same syntax. You can just make a group of access deny rules okay. and mm -hmm. name them like you uh, want to and then um, name them here again, mm -hmm. and that's it. Cool. <coughs> For now it's okay. Then we need permissions. So now we are um, allowed to access the system, but we have permissions. And here are all the permissions like um, system call log verbose agent user config command, blah, 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 blah. So this is what you can allow mm -hmm. and deny. If you don't say it's allowed, then it's automatically denied. denied. Yeah. Um, and there is the magic word all, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, which includes all uh, classes. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a good idea for starting to use all to understand what okay. happens. Mm -hmm. And then you can restrict it. And there are two methods uh, where you can allow a class. You can allow a class for reading and writing. Okay. Um, so if you test this on a productive system or on an important system, you mm -hmm. shouldn't do it, but if so, <laughs> then just allow reading and you cannot make big mistakes. Yeah, um, that's a read very all good idea. Yeah, read all the stuff. Um, and then if you're sure what you're doing, you can test writing, but never do, it, uh, do this. Just set up your test system or mm -hmm. um, your local system in a, uh, yeah. in a hypervisor and you can... Do it like this. Okay. Okay. Um, then you can say something like read is, and then you can say, I want the user to read system call log, blah, 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 and write blah, 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 blah. Um, to make things easy, we just say read all, write all, because it's our testing system. <laughs> so this is the most insecure configuration you can imagine. Oh, man. Yeah, for learning, insecure is okay. So last time around we had the spammers and this time we're making it insecure. Yeah. <laughs> so we say read all 
write all. Then we have to restart the asterisk service because if you do a configuration that you open a new port or mm -hmm. change bindings of an IP address, then for sure you have to restart course, the service. Yeah. You, Makes it's sense. not enough to reload it. Then you can check if it worked. Again, net start. And then you can see there is a new TCP port which is related to asterisk. And that's the asterisk AMI. Uh, everybody can access it. And our ACL only permits access by Matthias. Okay, fair enough. We will see how that works next time around. That's a bit of a cliffhanger for you. Yes. Then. Okay, so there you have it. I'm right. getting better and better. You are getting better at this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there you have it. Next time around, uh, Matthias is going to test his, his setup to see whether it actually works or not. Uh, so fingers crossed there. Um, uh, so if you've got a topic or anything, then please start voting or add a topic on uh, pascom.ideascale.com. Uh, until next time, thanks very much for watching. See you. Bye.